Well, each week a group of insiders joins me to offer perspective on some of the week's top stories. This week, sounding off on that big uh, Bex expansion in Hamilton County, a major development coming to downtown Westfield, and how Hoosiers are remembering Richard Luger and also Birch Pye. Our insiders this week are HRG Strategies President Robert Herzog, also Short Strategy Group Chairman and CEO Frank T. Short, and UND Assistant Professor of Political Science, Laura Merrifield Wilson. And welcome one and all to the Insiders awesome. this Thank week. You. Uh, we start off with that, uh, that big expansion uh, from Bex uh, in Atlanta, northern Hamilton County. Uh, Frank Bex is a truly a homegrown Indiana success story. Largest family-owned seed company in the entire United States. The $62 million expansion will essentially double their uh, processing and production facility in, uh, in Atlanta. I, I, you're right. I think it's a great success story. You know, they're not only the largest in Indiana, but they're like mm -hmm. the third largest in the country, mm -hmm. and they only do business in about 11 or 12 right. states as opposed to the whole country. I mean, I think it's a business that's been focused, and as you talked about earlier, you know, we were talking off camera, you know, these jobs that are going to be coming are tech jobs, so it's kind of Laura was just saying, you know, it combines our roots with where we're going in business, so, you know, it's a lot different than when they started that company. Yeah, yeah very, very much uh, a different story. And Laura, as, as you talk about these jobs, 60 jobs or so, uh, this is an agriculture company, but the jobs are in you know, software writers and, and IT uh, d you know, developers, uh, people in the research area. So these are, these are high-tech jobs and jobs that pay above the average. They are. They're incredibly lucrative. These are the kind of things we want to attract to the state. And I do think it's a great merging of our history, where we're going. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's the agricultural roots, but it's mm -hmm. in the 21st century. And, yeah. and that's exactly what they're offering here. Yeah, yeah. from a workforce uh, standpoint, you know, agriculture, like other sectors, trying to get young people, uh, manufacturing, searching for those young people. These kinds of jobs, it's kind of the message that the ag community wants to get out to young people, college graduates. These are the kind of jobs we have in the industry. It's a great vertical for Indy to be in, and I love the, the slow but steady growth, too, of this organization. It yeah. just proves what you can do as a family, yeah. well-run organization within, you know, mm -hmm. agriculture in Indiana and the Midwest. Yeah, really as, you, as you look at this sector, it's generally called the Ag Biosciences now. Agrinovus is a, an organization really doing some great things in Indiana to bring these uh, elements together. But the potential that you feel Indiana has in this space, Bex is just one of numerous companies in the space. You've got Purdue, uh, among others. Yeah. I mean, it's there, there's a ton of upside, right? It's a matter of kind of identifying priorities and making sure from an investment standpoint on the public policy side and investment of, you know, from the state that we're making those right decisions but this is clearly one from a private investment perspective it makes yeah. a lot of sense but it's yeah. going to you're going to see a lot of growth in this vertical for sure yep uh, in terms of economic development you have to look at what is happening uh, in a number of community cities uh, around the state including here in central Indiana uh, Frank Westfield continues to be uh, a community that is changing in a big way they announced a major 25 million dollar residential and commercial development uh, for the city's downtown retail, residential, uh, and, and other things there. Uh, one city that really is transforming itself. Yeah, I think uh, Mayor Cook, when he was talking about it, I read the, one of the reports yesterday, you know, they want to make sure, as we were just talking earlier, their history with going forward, so they want to maintain their downtown, their old downtown, much as Carmel has done with the Arts District, but bring in, you know, wrap mm -hmm. the new around it and everything. So, you know, all those bedroom communities from Indianapolis are doing a great job of becoming their own destination not just somewhere people live, come to the city and work and go home. I mean, they're, they're now destinations on their own. And all the Hamilton County mayors, all those cities, Carmel, Fishers, mm. Westfield, Noblesville, they're all growing. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Yeah. It's what it seemed like we talk about it every time on, on this show. It's all about livability, right? Yeah, and I mean, this is an exa perfect example of trying to build that livability in the core downtown, as Frank mentioned, that, you know, younger people, you know, even some retired wannabe, want to go right. to restaurants, want to want to walk around, be in a livable spot. And that, that's a good example. And, and, you know, I think it's about building a brand, too. And in this case, Westfield's brand is at Youth Sports with yeah. Grand Park. And yep. uh, I mean, heck, the Colts are going to have their training uh, headquarters there yeah. for the next 10 years. Uh, so it's about creating a, a kind of that brand around vibrancy. Fishers, For it's sure. it's the uh, the high-tech, the innovation entrepreneurship piece. Yep, yep, 
I, li I like it a lot. The north side is really doing a, a great yeah. job. Hopefully they can keep the full steam ahead, and this is a great example for Westfield. Well, and it's about uh, recognition, I guess you could say. Carmel uh, this week was named a top ten place to raise a family in the Midwest. Now you have a lot of lists that are out there. Does that mean anything? Oh, I think it does. I, Carmel obviously rises to the top for a number of different things, but when you look in, in terms of economic opportunities, certainly from community, we talk about livability, mm -hmm. I mean, even education. Like, they're known not just within central Indiana or the state, but really across the country, and uh, mm -hmm. they've obviously been very successful. Yeah, and attracting corporate headquarters and that corporate base, they've done a really good job at that. Another economic development piece, sports, is big here in Indianapolis and around the state. This was a big week for uh, the Indy 11, the soccer franchise here in Indianapolis. Governor uh, Holcomb signing the bill that essentially creates the opportunity to build a new stadium. Uh, as part of a bigger uh, development, but a big, uh, big, uh, big week for the Indy Yeah, Lab. and I think Ursal Osmere has done a great job. But as you said, you know, it's a big development. It's not just a stadium and parking for a thousand cars. You know, again, a destination. You know, and much as every development that's going on Waterside that Ambrose mm -hmm. is doing is a destination. Cityway, just south of downtown, was a destination. One of the first ones that Buckingham did, Brad Chambers. And Ursal is going to build a destination with retail and living space and apartments and restaurants like you talked about. So again, the focus will be the stadium, but it'll be everything around it that creates that destination. Mm -hmm. Now the question will be, where it's going to go. That's right. an interesting question. I don't think anybody knows that yet. Yeah, nobody knows what do we think. Is it going to be, everybody thinks it's got to be downtown somewhere or close, close to Yeah, I, I mean, I've heard, of, like, I think everybody heard a number of different, you know, places that could be. I think all the focus is, you know, near downtown or, or mm -hmm. very closely adjacent to. So, you know, that's that's the next big step. And and this was, we couldn't get to that next spot, you right. know, in the it, without being able to get through uh, yeah. uh, the governor. So I'm glad yeah. to see that they're going to be able to do that. Yep, Frank, you think that's, site south of um, Lucas Oil. And then that's close. You mentioned Waterside, the GM. Yeah, it, it all plant. connects. So yeah. It seems like a logical place. So yeah. let's see what happens. We'll, we'll see. Also uh, this week, remember, remembering some uh, Hoosier icons, some true uh, legends in the political uh, community uh, in our state, Richard Luger uh, passing away. And a lot of social media flooded with a lot of, of, of thoughts and and uh, remembrances of him. And uh, Laura, as you look at the legacy that he leaves as a former mayor of Indianapolis, as a senator, the impact uh, not only here in Indiana, but really around the globe. Oh, exactly. It was an international reputation that Luger cultivated. I think part of it was because he wasn't partisan in what he did. He was willing to compromise. Um, he was also someone who was really focused on, on the long term. So through his two terms as mayor and then six in terms of the Senate, he wasn't just looking at what we're doing now, but kind of that vision for the future. I see a lot of what we've done in, in Indianapolis yeah. uh, to credit to him. And how about the bipartisanship that you mentioned? A lot of people bring that up uh, with him that seems to be vacant or missing in today's environment. I, I had the pleasure of seeing that on a number of different occasions with him and his fight for hunger, his internationalism, you know, the, what he did in the, the city of Indianapolis. I think it's something that today's, you know, legislators, mm -hmm. whether they be here in Indianapolis or mm -hmm. in, you know, D.C. can really work towards. Yeah. It's, it's about finding common ground, right? And I think he was a good example of that. Yeah. yeah, I think you take Birch Bayh and Richard Luger and, you know, those kind of politicians aren't around anymore. When you think about it, Birch Bayh was the only person in the history of the Republic to write two constitutional amendments who wasn't a founding father. Not wow. one, twice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Title IX, which allowed, mm -hmm. you know, women and girls to participate in sports. I noticed the fever was well represented at the memorial service yesterday, which I thought was nice. You know, Senator Luger, nuclear weapons proliferation, mm -hmm. the stopping of that. Working again with Sam Nunn from Georgia, Democrat, more bipartisan. You know, those types of people, the Birch Bys, the Dick Lugers, Lee Hamilton was at the service mm -hmm. yesterday, another foreign affairs expert. He and Dick Luger worked for years together, you know, on foreign affairs, you know, advising presidents in Lee's case from Johnson to Obama, you know. So I think that, mm -hmm. you're right, I think we need more of that to come back because it's a unique quality that we're losing bit by bit every day. Yeah. And it's, it's everybody's fault, so everybody has to yeah. give some to get the process yeah. going Amazing back. Hoosier legacy. I mean, yeah. really, it's the way to look at it with those two. It really is. Yep, no question. Robert Herzog, Laura Merrifield uh, Wilson, also Frank T. Short. Thank you one and all. And we'll be uh, right back after this.